Good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. I'm Jenna Stauffer. This morning, I'll be talking about fitness, decorating, and a big event that's coming up this weekend. But first, I love talking with local artists. As you know, I love showcasing their work on the show. Now, I always feature a lot of paintings, so I'm excited to bring you a little variety this morning and feature a local artist whose passion is in pottery. Now, she's a native Key Wester. She's best known for her functional pottery. Her bright colors and her tasteful designs are her signature look. What's exciting now is that her 11-year dream of starting her own gallery is finally coming true. And this gallery, it has a little twist to it that she'll fill us in on this morning. Grace, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having me. All right, let's get right into your gallery because I know this is probably what's consumed your life for the past couple of years, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I have had this goal of mine to open my own pottery studio along with the gallery together. And mm -hmm. the niche of this gallery will be that people will be able to walk into the gallery. There'll be two uh, wind glass windows and a glass door, so they'll be able to see right into the working pottery studio, get a glimpse of what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. One window will display works in progress. The other window will display uh, bisque ware, that's the, that's the white glazed, you know, the unglazed pottery that's before the glazed fire. So it's really beautiful in that state too. So they'll get, oh. they'll get a chance to see all the stages mm -hmm. that it goes through before it gets to the final, the final product that they'll see in the gallery. So it's kind of educational then. Absolutely. The yeah. Okay, and now it's also going to be featuring some other artists in the community, right Grace? Yes. Lois Songer is my business partner. She does jewelry and lamp work, bead work. And then we'll have Kim Workman, who does Gayutaku fish rubbings. That's a Japanese-style technique of fish rubbings. Her work is gorgeous, so hopefully you'll get to see her on the show as well someday. Um, both Lois and Kim and I will also be doing classes there. And then we hope to have a few other artists. Um, as we get set up, we'll see what kind of space allows, and we'll hopefully have a couple other jewelers and perhaps a couple other wall artists. Okay, now I have to say I'm so impressed by your work. It's Thank beautiful, you. your designs, your pottery, everything. It's, it's beautiful. How long have you been doing this for? I have been a potter for since 2000. Um, my first craft show was 2001. Mm -hmm. So definitely people that have followed my work from that early time period have seen it change and grow and mature. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm coming into my own with my style and I still have a ton of stuff that I want to do. Um, the work that you see here on the back is all called the Scraffito Technique. Mm -hmm. So what that is, is that's actually, um, I put a layer of colored slip, colored clay body over the piece, I draw the design and then I carve away. So everything that you see that's white has all been carved away and that's the actual color of the clay body. Mm -hmm. And then it gets a clear coat before the glaze fire. So all of this work here is extremely time consuming. It's extremely detail oriented on the upfront side, but then like the after side, the glazing after the bisque fire is, you know, doesn't take much time. So this has been the work that I've been concentrating on for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Although I do have, you know, I have, I'm always changing. My work mm -hmm. definitely changes probably every couple of years because I get bored, mm -hmm. you know, I like to like right. to keep it fresh and everything like that. So. But this is, I think when you see this work compared to my work I did probably six years ago. Totally different. Totally different. What do you think has made it change so much, Grace? Just you growing, yes, growing up? Growing, <laughs> um, always kind of perfecting. I would say I'm definitely a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my work and mm -hmm. definitely a control freak. So, you know, pushing the envelope, but, you know, my father, when I first started, he <laughs> would pick up a piece and it'd be so heavy and he'd go, ooh, so substantial. <laughs> so I, you know, have been really, I, I like that fine line between really good quality in a, in a piece of pottery versus, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but really just, you know, not so heavy. If mm -hmm. it's always, if, it's, if, I, if I'm trimming the pot and I pick it up and it still has a little bit of weight to it, I'll put it back on the wheel and I'll trim some more away. Okay. You know, because I really like for people to pick it up and, and use it. Mm -hmm. If it's too heavy, they're not going to use it. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. my main goal is for people to use their, my stuff in their everyday life. What are your price ranges for your work, Grace? Well, they're not 
super cheap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's definitely handmade. It's quality. Mm -hmm. um, I have littler items ranging from about $15 individually. My mugs are in the 36 28 to $36 price range. And then um, some of the work you see here, like the mugs there, are 30, 36 a piece. The, um, some of these bowls are around 325 mm -hmm. for the pedestal bowls and stuff like that. Two, 225 to 325. Um, there's the tall piece that's featured. That's my Key West, um, called Day in Key West. That one was 950. But you know, for functional pottery, I would say it's definitely quality. Mm -hmm. You know, you're mm -hmm. getting you're getting a, a handmade product that you're mm -hmm. not going to get anywhere else. Right, right, and time consuming, so time consuming Definitely. for you. Yeah. Now, when is the gallery going to be open? Opening we day? are hoping for August 27th, okay. that's our goal. And location? The location is 529 Whitehead, right on the corner of Apple Roof Lane and Whitehead, and it's between Southerd and Fleming. Okay, and not only, again, will you just be able to see the work, but you'll actually get to interact with the artist, learn a little bit about how they create these masterpieces. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with Thank us. Thank you so much, and we hope you guys will stop by Ruby's and Clay at 529 Whitehead. We will, definitely. I'm going to take a quick break right now. Stay with me.